Okay, so now we're going to be starting part two of angle relationships. This will deal with angles that refer to parallel lines. So what that means is each type of angle we're going to discuss, each pair of angles, will have the requirement that there are a pair of parallel lines in order for these angles to be congruent to each other. Um, there are, they are always there, but in order for them to be important enough for us to discuss, they're going to have to be congruent. In order for that to occur, they're going to have to be parallel lines present. Okay, so remember before we talked about how they could either be equal to each other, add up to 90, or add up to 180. Well, with this, all we really have is that they're equal to each other. Okay, and again, this only occurs with parallel lines. Okay, so one thing that we're going to be given to start off here is that two angles on the interior of parallel lines on the same side of the transversal are supplementary. So, some things to talk about here. First of all, okay, um, this line right here is the transversal. Um, that's the name of a line that cuts across um, two parallel lines. The way that we note that those lines are parallel is this right here. Okay, those two arrows signify parallel lines. So when you look at this picture, I see that I have two a set of parallel lines and I have a transversal cutting across it. Okay. What it also says is it says that two angles on the interior. Okay. That term is going to be very important. What I want you to think about is think about this being like a rectangle. Okay? So imagine those parallel lines making a rectangle. This is the interior. Okay, and then that would mean these are the exterior. So the term just means inside and outside. Okay, so in the interior would be inside those two lines, on the exterior would be outside those two lines. Okay, um, they also says that they're on the same side. Okay, so when we talk about the transversal, that means it's either on that side right there, or it's on this side right here. Okay, either way. So those are on each side. This is the dividing side right here. So on the left side or on the right side of the transversal. In this case, we're talking about on the same side of the transversal. So those lines would be such like one and two. They're on the same side, the right side. Okay. And then the next thing we're talking about is the fact that they are supplementary. Supplementary means they add up to 180. So what it's saying is it's saying the measure of one and the measure of 2 is equal to 180 degrees. This is something we can use all the time. So if I see a problem, for example, a couple parallel lines, okay, cut by a transversal. Um, if I want to go ahead and do a problem, it could look something like this. I could say this is 90 degrees right there. Okay, and what that'll tell you is, it'll tell you that this right here, if this is x, this would have to equal 90 degrees as well to make 180 together. Okay, so if, for example, this right here is 120 degrees, then because they're supplementary, this would have to be 60 degrees so that when you add them together you get 180 degrees. Okay? And that's something that is we're going to use and it'll be true for all cases. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're first going to look at alternate interior angles. That's the first one we're going to discuss. What we're going to do during this is we're also going to prove them and then at the end we'll look at, look at some extra examples. So first, okay, we've got a pair of angles on alternate sides. That's where the term alternate comes from. Alternate, alternate sides. If you don't know what alternate means, it means if I draw a line, one's on the left side and the other one's on the right side of the line. That's what alternate means. So when we talk about parallel lines, okay, now we're talking about one on each side of that line and we talked about before on the interior of the parallel lines. So basically they're both on the inside and they're on the interior of the line. So that could look something like A and B. 
This is on the left side, this is on the right side, and they're both on the interior of those two parallel lines inside of them. Okay, if this was, if instead of here the A was there, those are no longer alternate interior because that one of them is on the outside. The A is on the outside now. So again, here's my example picture. There are two pairs. So you have the first right here and the second right there, one and two and three and four. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and go through a proof of it. Okay, so we're going to use those three examples right there. And what we're going to do is we're just going to prove that one has to equal two, no matter what. Okay, and we're not going to use any specific numbers because if that's the case, how do I know it's not just that one time that it's equal? No, we're going to use no numbers, just generic. So we're setting up our simple two column proof that we've been practicing. Okay, so the first thing is that m is parallel to n. Okay, that's a given. Okay, I can't just immediately say 1 equals 2. But what I do know from the previous example is that 1 plus 3 equals 180. That's the one we just talked about. We'll call it the interior, interior angles rule. Okay, what I also know, and again, that's just because these are on the interior on the same side. That's what we just talked about. Okay, in addition to that, I also have that these angles here, use different colors so you guys can really see it, those angles together make a straight line. Okay, because they make a straight line, that means they are add up to 180 by supplementary. Two lines, two angles that are next to each other making a straight line are supplementary. Okay, now what we have is we have a situation where they both include three. Okay, so we'll be able to eliminate that later. And in addition to that, they're both equal to 180. Because they're both equal to 180, we can go ahead and say they're equal to each other. Okay, they're equal to each other by substitution. And now we can eliminate the threes. And it leaves us with the fact that they are congruent because angles have no size. Um, besides the measure of the angle, the length of the lines doesn't matter. So in this case, we just apply the congruency rule. Okay, so now let's take a look at an example. Go back to our first one. Okay, we're going to look at an example down below. So for example, if I put that 60 and that is x, how could I figure out the value of x using alternate interior angles? Well, first of all, think about what are my alternate interior angles. I basically have, this is an, an interior angle. Okay, I know that much. And I'm trying to think about which one would be the alternate. So what I can do is I can kind of look at this rectangle here. I think I'm looking for an angle on the other side of the, of the uh, transversal. So it has to be somewhere over here, one of these two. Okay, That is also on the interior and is alternate. So if I put it here, that's not right because it's not quite alternate. So what it is going to be is going to be this angle here. So if I were to know that one, if I was to know why, then I could say those two are equal to each other. All right, so basically first thing I need to do is I need to think how could I get this angle right here? What could I do to get that? Well, again, look, here we have a straight line, okay, made up of this 60 degree angle here and whatever's left over here. Well, if 180 degrees is a straight line, then that would mean this is, has to be 120 degrees. And I can go from there. So we'll do it in the form of a proof just to organize our thoughts. What I do know is I know that y plus 60 equals 180, which is supplementary. If I subtract 60 from both sides, I get 120 degrees, which is subtraction. And from there, I can say that x equals y by alternate interior 
and therefore x equals 120 by substitution. So once I know that one, then I can get the other one. It's very important, I think, in geometry to kind of follow your path, sort of to think how do I get from point A to point B, and start searching out ways to find those answers. Okay, everybody, next what we're going to be doing is we're going to be talking about alternate exterior angles. So again, it's, it's very similar to the last one in that they're going to be on alternate opposite sides of the transversal, but they're, this time they're going to be on the exterior of the parallel line. So if we use the same method as before, we take a rectangle where our parallel lines are, kind of envision that. Now they're going to be on opposite sides of the transversal, which is that line right there. There's going to be on opposite sides, so one will be on the right side and one will be on the left side. However, they're now on the exterior. So what that means is one's going to be on the outside this side and one will be on the outside this side. Or, okay, one will be on the outside over here and the matching one will be on the outside over here. So we're talking about the exterior of that sort of rectangle shape you have there. This sort of shape right here. Okay, the exterior of that. Or it'll be on the interior. This particular one is on the exterior of the transversal or of the parallel lines. Okay, so taking a look here, we've got two pairs. Like I said before, we've got the ones that are here on the exterior, outside, and on opposite sides of the line. And we have these two on the exterior, so on the outside of our rectangle, okay, um, but on opposite sides. So on this side is the right, and this side is the left of that line. So now we're going to go ahead and prove it. Okay, so we're going to prove that alternate exterior angles are congruent when lines are parallel. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and talk for, about this picture here, and we're going to use a couple of extra angles in there, an angle 3 and an angle 4, to help us understand what's going on here, to get from, from point A to point B, so to speak. And we're only going to use things we already understand from before. So we're going to try to show that 1 equals 2, again, because this is on the right side or left side and this is on the right side of that transversal and if we were to draw a rectangle okay for the parallel lines we could see it's on the exterior you can feel free to you know when you're doing a problem like this if it helps you kind of you know connect these and visualize that rectangle um, are they on the inside of the rectangle or on the outside of the rectangle okay so starting off here we're going to talk about the m and n are, are parallel that's a given we need that in order to be able to prove this. Um, and as it says, you know, the arrows show parallel, and the problem is that we're, if the lines are parallel, therefore alternate exterior, exterior angles are congruent. Okay, so we're going to start off with 1 equals 3. Remember that if I draw a line right here, and I just sort of look at only that red X right there, then that's vertical angles. So 1 and 3 are vertical, therefore they're equal. Okay, next up I want to show that 3 equals 4. Okay, so looking at our... Thing we had talked about before. 3 and 4 are on the interior and they're on opposite sides of the line so therefore they're equal by the alternate interior rule that we just learned. Okay from there we also know that 1 equals 4 because if 1 equals 3 and 3 equals 4 then that would mean they're the same so you could use the transitive property or substitution. Okay, and remember the last thing we're trying to show is that they're congruent. Okay, that's the last thing we want to do. So 2 is equal to 4 by vertical angles. Again, if we look at the x, do blue this time, they are across each other on that x. So they're diagonal across the x from each other. So 2 equals 4 over vertical angles, and then 1 must equal 2 because of substitution again. And again, remember, I'm allowed to do that because now we have this equal to 4 and this equal to 4. So they're both equal to the same thing. Therefore, they must be equal to each other. And like I said before, finally, we could say they're congruent. Okay, so basically what we're going to do now is we're going to take a look at a specific example. What we want to do is we want to determine the value of x in this problem. Again, this is not a super straightforward problem because of the fact that um, these are not currently alternate exterior. Sure, 
they are both on the exterior, but they're also both on the left side of the line. If I draw my line here, they're both on the same side of that line. So that's not going to work. What I need is I need this one right here, and then the x in that one would be the same. So what I can do is I can kind of think about what I know. Well, thinking before, this makes a straight line. Okay, So the 75 plus whatever's right here would have to be 180 because straight lines are always 180. So that means this is 105 degrees. Okay, And then given by the uh, alternate exterior rule, that would also have to be 105. So we're going to do it in the form of a proof. We're going to put a y in there. Once the y is in there, we're going to say, hey, well, y plus 75 is 180. Supplementary. So therefore, y equals 105 by the subtraction postulate. And x equals y by alternate exterior. Therefore, x equals 105 by substitution. So as you can see, it's not very difficult. Um, the only time you're going to have to go through all this formal proof like this is if it's specifically asked for. In general, what I would want you to do is I want you to figure out what the angle is, and I want you to use some sort of geometric reasoning to explain it. Um, another thing, as we've talked about before, these angles have no relationship to the arrows themselves. These lines go on forever. Okay. I can only represent so much of them on the line, but they go on forever. The important part is to look at how wide the angle is. So the shape of this small angle right here is the same as the shape of this small angle, is the same as shape as this small angle and that angle right there. The larger ones are like there, 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 and there. So you're getting different size angles up there, but there's really only two. So the last one we're going to talk about is corresponding angles. Okay, corresponding angles are one that are a little bit confusing for people sometimes. Um, so we're going to look at some strategies to help you to help you figure that out. So first of all, there are four pairs of corresponding angles. The best way I can explain corresponding angles to someone is to look at each of these. Let me redo that one. Okay, to so look at each of these as a set of four spots. Okay, and I'm going to try to use a different color on each one. So top left. Okay. Top right. Okay, bottom left. And bottom right. Okay, what corresponding angle says is that basically each one that I use a color for there, each angle that's in the same spot out of the four possible places on each line is equal to each other. So the reds are both equal, the pinks are both equal, the greens are both equal, and the yellows are both equal. That those lines themselves are equal. Okay, I'm sorry, those angles themselves are equal. So looking at it here, we've got those two are equal, those two are equal. Okay, and again, looking at it from before, if I draw a line around a rectangle around it, you can see top left, top left, top right, top right, bottom left, bottom left, bottom right, bottom right. They're all the same. Okay, so three and four are equal. One and seven, one and two are equal. Seven and eight are equal. Five and six are equal. Okay, so next up, we're going to go ahead and prove it, and we're going to use the stuff we've learned before. So taking a look at this right here. Okay, we're going to try to show that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. So we're going to start off with what we know, which is that 1 is equal to 3. And that M and N are parallel. So 1 is equal to 3 because of vertical angles. Remember again, if you make an X and an X, you're going to notice that they are across from each other. Okay, after that, 2 equals 3 because of alternate interior. Remember, again, they are on the interior. You can turn this into a bit of a rectangle here. They're on the inside of the rectangle, and they're on opposite sides of transversal. Okay, so from there, now we're going to say that 1 equals 2, because remember, in this case, we both have, both of these are equal to 3, so therefore they must equal each other by substitution. And finally, that means they're also congruent to each other.
Okay, so the last thing we're going to do is we're going to look at a specific example. Okay, um, again, these are not currently corresponding. Um, the way you could tell is this is in, if I was looking at this square here, okay, we've got bottom right, and then that's bottom right, which is blank. So we're going to have to go ahead and figure out something to help us get that one right there. So one way to do it would be to go ahead and say that that's y, and therefore x plus y equals 35 based on supplementary, y equals 145 based on subtraction, and x equals y based on corresponding, which of course gives us our answer. So very similarly, you could have done the same thing and said, hey, this is 35 right here. This is 35 right here, okay? And then therefore those make a straight line together, so that would have to be 145. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at some specific examples, some simple ones. Um, we're gonna try to solve each one in its own unique way. So if you wanna go ahead and pause the video here and give it a try, um, you're trying to set them equal to each other, but basically understand why you're able to set them equal to each other. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to first determine what kind of problem it is. It turns out that the way things are laid out, we're going to call it a corresponding problem. If I draw my four, my two spots of four here, you can see that in both situations, in the upper right and the upper right, that is where I have my angle. So given that and given the fact that I have parallel lines, that would mean that they are in fact equal to each other, which means I get 3x minus 4 equals 32 degrees. Adding 4 to both sides and dividing by 3, I get x equals 12. Let's look at another example. As you can probably see, they're in the same place. The only reason I'm trying to do this one a little bit different is to give you different perspectives on ways to do these problems. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for basically alternate interior. Okay, What gave me a clue to that is because my x, as we talked about, is on the interior of the lines, so it's on the inside. Um, and what I really need is I want to just try something different. So I need another one that is also right here on the interior on the opposite side but not making a straight line. So what I need to know is I need to know what that question mark is. So the first thing you should recognize is that that does in fact equal 45. Why? Because it's vertical. Okay, again, this right here, no matter how long the thing is, this right here does count as vertical. Now we're going to end up with 4x plus 5 equals 45. And we can solve our two step equation to get x equals 10. Okay, looking at one last example. As you can see, these are already on the exterior. Okay, so when we go to decide our problem, we're going to kind of either draw this line or visualize it and see that they are both, in fact, on the outside of that box that created by the parallel lines. So they have to be exterior. Then I could ask myself, are they on opposite sides of the line? Okay, well, they are. The 6x minus 8 is on the left side, and the 3x plus 72 is on the right side. So now that means I could set them equal to each other because it's automatically an alternate exterior problem. They're on the exterior and they're alternate. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to set them equal to each other because that's what you do with alternate exterior angles. And we're going to go ahead and solve by subtracting 2x from both sides, adding 8, and dividing by 4. Okay, the last thing we're going to do is, as the problem says, I want to go ahead and find the measure of the angle here. Okay, so it's not enough just to do this. I have to find the measure of the angle. So I'm going to plug back in that 20 into whichever one looks easier. So in this case, I'm going to go 6 times 20, which is 120, minus 8, which is 112. And that makes sense. It looks like a 100 plus degree angle. Okay, so now that we've finished that problem, I want to kind of throw up a few more quick ones for you guys to look at, just so you guys can get in the perspective of looking at these angles. So I'm going to draw some sets of parallel lines. So for example, let's say that this is uh, 110 degrees. OK, 
okay? And I want to know x right there. Okay, you're going to have to figure out how to get to something that we know, okay? So one strategy that works for me on this um, is to go ahead and take this angle right here, okay, and fill in any other ones I know, but I have to know like why I'm filling it in. So immediately I'm thinking this is 110 because they're in the same spot. They're in that t upper left spot. Okay, from there then I could use a straight line and say, well, if that's 110, then this must be 70 by supplementary. So I've got corresponding to get down to here, and then supplementary gets me to there. That's 90 degrees right there, and that's 90 degrees right there. What I want to do is I want to check and see is this alternate interior, or exterior, or corresponding. So if I look at this, these are both on the outside. Okay, so that's exterior. One thing that I've noticed on this on these um, problems is that you kind of end up with either alternate interior where they're both on the inside, alternate exterior where they're both on the outside, or in corresponding, you actually get one of each each time. So one's on the in, one's on the out, and that's a very common thing. So it's kind of nice to just kind of look at where they're located, and that'll eliminate some of the possible answers. Okay, so from here though, I don't have anything that tells me what these two angles you know, are. So for example, if I didn't know that this was 90 down here, instead I had an x, the only way I'd be able to figure that out is I have to use something I've done before. So what I could do is I could look at this straight line right here and think what goes with the 90 degree angle to make a straight line. That would also be another 90 degree angle. Now from there, I have corresponding angles because I have one here and one there and they're both in the right location. Okay, so that's 35 degrees, okay, and x. So immediately what I would like you to look at is are they on the interior? Yes. Are they on alternate sides? Yes. Therefore, they're meeting that requirement for alternate interior. I don't have to do any other work. I don't have to move around. I just immediately get to say by alternate interior, x equals 35. Okay, so moving along again, Okay, looking at a couple more examples here, let's see which ones we haven't done yet. So let's see if I have this one right here is 105 degrees, and I want to find that one right there. Okay, so what we're doing again is we're trying to think, okay, what do I know about, what other angles do I know that are 105? Well, if you think about it, here's my box here. So these are both on the exterior, so automatically alternate exterior would be good. However, they're not on alternate sides. But if this is 105, then that must, must right there be 75 degrees. And I can instantly then know that by alternate exterior. So as soon as I get one, I get them both. Also, this is 75 here, in which case I get perfect on the other end as well. Okay, for the last example we're going to kind of look at real quick here. Okay, so we're going to set x up in the top there, and we'll go ahead and put forty-eight degrees right there. So what you have to think is you have to think, okay, do I have alternate interior? Do I have alternate exterior? Do I have corresponding? What do I have? So if I draw my lines, you can see that they're not both on the interior. They are on alternate sides, but they're not on the interior. So what we're going to do now is we, can, we can't really do exterior, we can't really do interior until we find a number that makes sense. So what I can do though is I can say, well, this is on the interior and that's 48 degrees, which means that must be 48 degrees. And therefore, that makes a straight line, therefore they add up to 180. And so then your answer would be 132. Well, thank you for watching. Um, hopefully you got some good practice examples out of there, and I'll see you in class tomorrow.